Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we'll be talking about how we can test a RAG application, other is called as the Retrieved Argumented Generation application using a large language model with the power of the Deep Eval tool. The Deep Eval is something but a large language model evaluation framework, which helps you evaluate large language model applications uh, to do quite a lot of different testing, as you can see over here. The, you can see that I have support for matrices like the, the answer relevance, faithfulness, context recall, context precisions, uh, context relevancy, and ragas. So we have also covered all these information in my course in Udemy, as you can see over here, build and test AI agents, chatbots, rags with Olama and local large language model which has got all the informations about how you can build the AI agent chatbots rags with the Olama and local large language model and also how you can test them using ragas as well as with the deep eval that we are going to be seeing over here. So basically this particular video that you are talk, uh, seeing over here is uh, is pretty much like what is like a glimpse of the course that I'm going to be uh, that that is already available in Udemy for you. So uh, again once again coming back to this particular uh, deep eval. Deep eval is quite good because they have got this uh, portal as you can see over here deep eval platform which will going to show you uh, a very good matrices as you can see so these matrices are quite interesting where you can see the test case and the uh, the answer relevance and like how the, the the actual response coming up from your large language model how they are working as expected and you can see the entire test cases the data set you can create the data set from one place and then you can see all the matrices from one single place which is quite awesome you can also export it uh, in the csv file you can create a link and you can share it to your friends or your uh, company uh, and also you can see the trend of how your large language models improvements are really happening so you can see them all from one single place as well which is quite awesome and that is what is being covered uh, in this particular uh, lecture and i will show you how we can see there is a failure of the test cases and how we can improve the entire uh, efficiency of the test case and then we can see the comparison of the trend uh, improving so for doing that i have already uh, created another uh, portal uh, i have signed up for another portal where i'm going to show you everything from the scratch so you can see that currently i don't really have any data set as such like it's kind of empty data set that i have got over here uh, i just have to give something just to see if that creates there we go uh, and you can see that everything is currently empty over here so the evaluation is also quite empty so i'm going to do everything from the scratch and i will show you how it actually works so basically uh, this particular uh, code base that I'm, you're going to be seeing over here is part of my course that i was showing you uh, which is available in udemy this one the build and test ai agent chatbots rags and olama with la local large language model so this course has got the entire source code and discussion from the complete ground up and again this discussion that you are seeing over here is also part of the previous discussions so you should have those informations as well but nevertheless you will know how the testing can be done because that is very straightforward so you can see that currently uh, i'm going to be loading my local large language model because i'm going to be using my local large language model for performing the rag operation so we have got this particular code to execute my local large language model and i'm going to be connecting with the deep evolve uh, using the api key which i got it from the portal so you need to sign up to the portal so that you get the api key and then you can start working with it and once you log in you're going to get a message saying congratulations you have successfully logged in and over here there is a concept called as golden data set so this is quite interesting because in order for you to evaluate your large language model, you need to have a question, which is the actual question, and then your response, which is the expected answer. So that is the question and the expected answer. So we need to create this golden data set, which can then be uh, then be uploaded to the uh, to the actual uh, to the actual portal itself as a data set uh, within the uh, within the deep valve. So I have created the code over here to upload the code. And once I do the push over here, you will notice that the code is now going to be pushed all the way uh, to the portal over there. Uh, and you will notice that if I go back to this particular portal over here, and if I refresh the page, uh, you should see that we ha will have a data set called as testing tool data set. And this data set is basically going to have all the data that I have actually created. So it, it has got the input data, which is my question, like what is Playwright and what browser does it support? And the expected output here, uh, it, it says that uh, you can actually click this one over here and it shows you everything in one single place. So the input is what is Playwright and what browser does it support? And the expected output is Playwright is a modern automation library, supports Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. 
So that is my expected output that I'm looking for. And similarly, I have created like seven questions over here and every seven questions is gonna have an input and an expected output. But guess what? Now we have this actual output column empty, the context empty and the retrieved, uh, retrieved context being empty, tool call and expert tools are all empty there. The reason why these are empty is because these are the one, these outputs are the one which should come from the large language model as well as the RAG application. So where are these things are gonna come from? This is where we have to understand how the RAG works and how our large language model is gonna get the response out from it. So those two actual output as well as the context or the relevant context are gonna something that we need to bring from the system that we are gonna be building right now. And I've already built a very super simple application, which is the RAG application over here. You can see that it needs an embedding and it also needs a document store and over here on the document store is where I'm gonna add the knowledge for our large language model. So basically this knowledge I'm telling that uh, Playwright is a modern automation library for end-to-end -end testing. It supports multiple browsers like Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. And Serenium is widely used for open source uh, frameworks, blah, blah, blah. And I'm also giving Cypress is this. Playwright allows network interception, headless uh, handles, uh, headless execution, tracings, and stuff. So you see that I'm giving some information Related to Playwright, Serenium, and Cypress. Uh, and I'm also asking some questions just in case. And I'm storing all these informations uh, in the in the vector stores, which is a Chroma database, which is a vector store, which is gonna test uh, check everything uh, using the cosine similarity and stuff. Uh, I've already discussed a lot more detail about that in the course, so you can go ahead and watch there. But but just that, this is the data store that we have got which is like a vector data store, just for your information, like a SQL database for that matter. Now this data, I'm gonna feed in uh, to our uh, large language model because now the large language model is gonna retrieve this information from the RAG. So I need to have a retriever which is gonna do that operation for me. So you see that now this retriever is actually getting the information from the database, which is from the vector store. Uh, and we also have got the large language model in the QA chain. Uh, over here, as you can see, I'm passing the large language model and the retriever. So vector stores data is gonna be passed to the uh, to the chain and the large language model is gonna be supplied over here. Don't worry about all this complexity because that is not the purpose of this particular video to confuse you that these are things that you, you need to know. The idea is now we need to create the actual output and the retrieved context. In order to get these two information, we need somehow the actual output from retrieved context from the RAG system and the actual output from the large language model. So I have did that over here uh, and I'm also gonna execute some code here, some magic code uh, and I'm gonna pull the data set that I have created and now I'm going to run this, uh, this particular deep evolve code uh, to create the test case into, uh, I mean the data set into an actual test case which can be executed against evaluation that we are gonna be doing with the matrices. So this is what is called as converting the golden into the test cases. You remember the golden that I was creating over here, the golden data set? We are converting this golden data set into the LLM test case, uh, which is a class, especially from the uh, Deep Evolve uh, team, so this one. So we are converting it to this particular fashion and it took 23 seconds to make this happen. So by this time, we have got the actual output as well as the retrieved context. These are the things, the retrieved context and actual outputs are already there at the moment in this particular execution. So it has get the data from the la large language model as well as from the vector data store. It's stored in this particular place. You can actually check how the data is actually coming up over here. Now I'm gonna do the evaluation. So this is the interesting part. This is the part which probably you should be uh, looking at. The moment I run this particular deep evolve over here, you should see that it is running all the tests against the uh, deep evaluation. And it is doing that with the data that you have got. And then it is verifying whether the data is matching with the actual question versus the expected answer that you're looking for. And now it is trying to run them all uh, with the OpenAI's API key. So at this point, you need an OpenAI's API key to make sure that evaluation can be done because if not, this is not gonna really work. So you see that there are a lot of uh, uh, OpenAI rate limit exceeding happens, which is fine, I've seen this many times, uh, but you, you should see at the end of the time that the timeout will all be 
just gone away and you should see the response coming up over there so i'm just waiting for this execution to complete there we go we reached the seven uh, test cases there which are running in parallel and the test has got completed guys you can see that now we have got the response coming up for us over here maybe i just go back and if i see the uh, evaluation over here you should see that we have got an evaluation and we have got a test execution happen this time you will notice that we have got a test case uh, which is quite interesting so you can see that it's a modern test case window there uh, this is annoying because you have to go through all these learnings which they uh, which they will force you to watch anyways uh, so if i go to the test case there again you should see that we have got all these test cases coming up over here so you should see that there is a passing of the actual relevance and there is a uh, faithful and the context precision and context recall and context relevance uh, and it says that the input is what is playwright and what browser does it support the actual output from the large language model is playwright is a modern automated library automation library designed for end-to-end -end testing it supports multiple browsers including chromium firefox and webkit and you'll also notice that the expected output is this one and the relevant context that it got is these. As you can see, the relevant context is pretty close. The relevant context is the one that's coming from the vector database. So you see that it is pretty close to what that we are looking for. And that's the reason why the large language model could easily answer the question and it got the actual output, which is pretty close to what the expected output is. And that's when you can see that we could able to test it out so correctly. And all of these test cases has got passed over here. And there is one failure it says that uh, does playwright has native selenium uh, native test runner unlike selenium uh, we say that the context provider does not mention whether the playwright has native test runner uh, or not based on the given context uh, because guess what in this particular data that we have got we don't have such data over here so that is the thing that we need to add as a data for the RAG application to see how we can actually get that data out. So for that data part, we can go and fix that particular issue uh, and make sure that uh, our application has learned from, uh, I mean, our RAG can give more information to our large language model to get the context so that we have our learned application there. So in order for doing that, uh, I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to say on the uh, documents of the page underscore content, I'm going to say uh, playwright has native, uh, playwright has got, has a native test runner called as playwright test, which handles test execution unlike Selenium, right? So I'm just going to copy paste everything directly uh, just for the sake of the time. I'm going to save this all over here and I'm going to restart and let me try to run them all over here so this is like i'm just trying to do this uh just to uh just to make sure that every single step that we executed manually run all the block one by one over here while i run them all on the top so you see that all these nodes are executed that is the power of the jupyter nodes that you are seeing because it is going to run all the code block for you pretty much like how you do uh, execute your code in an normal python uh, file and look at that now it has done and now it is running the uh, evaluation one more time so it is doing the same kind of evaluation from the start to the end and now we should see for the second run there should be some improvement uh, as opposed to the first one finger crossed if we will see if that really happens there we go it has got the results i hope we should see some results i can just gonna close these windows and yo there we go you see that we have got a bit of a, a slight deviation compared to our last test case because it says that uh, probably in this one i think i know what is the problem so you see that the contextual response has reduced uh, further for the second question that we have got so what is selenium and what programming language does it support it says selenium is widely used for open source framework for web publication support uh, blah 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 and uh, expected output is this which is also quite right but the retrieved context uh, has got many information because there is very few data for selenium and again brings playwright code as well uh, like playwrights information as well as the retrieved context so that's the reason why the contextual response uh, relevance has reduced a bit not a lot but it's 0.40 uh, there uh, and how about the network interception that we have got 
Okay, what is network interception playwright? So it looks like the playwright network interception thing has gone a bit more. But you, you see that the question about the playwright uh, test that was failing before, uh, which is the this one, does playwright has native playwright test runner? Yes, this time it is matching for both of them because we just copy pasted the exact th terms over there and it is working fine for us. Now, this is the thing about the deep valve. Uh, you might think that Karthik, this has reduced further. What do you think? This is not correct in, in AI. That's why AI testing is not quite right uh, because you are we are not doing the right testing. You may ask that question, but I I, I understand what you're talking about. So if I just go to this particular um, deep valve framework, they always say that you need to do a lot of different permutations and combinations every single time to see the improvement slowly and steadily. So the same test that you are seeing over here might improve with even more data that you pass in uh, to make sure that the test can run fine. And one of the example probably what I can do is I can copy a few more uh, data over here. Uh, like this has got like a couple more uh, data that I have added in and I'm going to restart and I'm going to run them all from the from the start this time. And I will show you there will be a bit of an improvement this time. And I'll tell you what I really mean about that. So I'm going to not overwrite the uploading of the data one more time. Uh, and we will see what is really going to happen. So yeah, vector store is going to store the data and it's going to convert the golden test, uh, goldens into the test cases, which is a bit of a time consuming process in my machine because it requires running of the local LLM as well as the vector stores. And there we go. And now it is running the deep eval this time. So we're running third time this time and we'll see if there is any improvement happens uh, because I have added a bit more data. So every single time you add more and more data to your rack system, your large language model get more context and then you can start testing it. And in fact, the good thing about the uh, deep eval which I found out is that you can go to the data set straight away on this particular UI and then you can improve the data set from here. Not only that, you can also upload the data that is obtained from your uh, from your actuals as well as your contextual data, which you can upload it as well. You can version control it, and then you can verify in future that whether there is any deviation of the response coming from your large language model in later point of time. I mean, those things are quite interesting because those things are not something there in many other tools. Uh, but yeah, this tool do really has that particular information. Now, if I go to the evaluation there for the third time, you see that now there is a slight improvement this time. There is uh, out of uh, five failure before. Now it has a six failure, like back to the square one. But you see the test cases now. Uh, we have got an improvement there. Uh, and then, and, 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 oh my God, the copy pasting has ruined my existing copy code that I, I was writing over there. I think that's the reason why this has this has got failed. So I should have added that part over here. I think I missed it. Uh, probably if I just do that, it just comes out over here. But I don't want to waste my token that I have got uh, with the with the LLM. So I'm just going to leave that guy as it is. But you got the idea, right? Like how you actually do things with the uh, deep eval where you can test or evaluate your large language model with multiple data set. Make sure that you have enough data uh, in your rag so that it gets the actual output. And this way we can ensure that we can keep on testing our large language model with multiple combinations of data set. And also we see there is an improvement happens over the period of time. And with that, you can see now our MT portal that we had before has got a bit of an uh, information there. Uh, and also you can see all the test cases coming up over there. Uh, I know there is a bit, it's not, the trend is not quite right because we, we just are in the same state of the one we were before. But yeah, this is how you'd actually test that using the deep valve. I like this approach overall uh, in terms of testing the uh, large language model with multiple data sets. We can keep improving it because the data is quite lesser. But tell me what is your thought about testing the large language model? How do you test your large language model? Because this is kind of a new area still emerging. A lot of people are learning like me. I'm learning it as well. It will be great if you all collaborate and test all these in more and more better fashion. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.